buddy. I love that. I love hanging right with you. Crossing swords. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> Good morning. We're just discussing this conversation about Antiochus Epiphanes and what the uh, what the abomination that causes desolation means. Um, it's pretty funny because there are several interpretations. One, uh, we won't even we won't bring up because it, it that's the one that Bill and I were kind of discussing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it could be one of two things, and I want us to to just narrow this down. And we're in verse fifteen, and then we're going to pray, and then we're going to come back to this again. But I just since we're talking about it, might as well do it. In verse 15 of chapter 24 of Matthew, by the way, good morning, how are you? Hope you're doing well. <laughs> We've already been doing this. You're just yeah. catching up. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just into this. It says, so when you see standing in the holy place, the, the abomination that causes desolation, and we, we, we don't know, we have some thoughts about what that is. Uh, th- that's really what I want you to know. We're not sure. I'm not sure what it is, personally. Um, there's more than two interpretations of it, but the two most popular interpretations of it would be that that abomination that causes desolation happened in 70 AD when the right. temple was destroyed, destroyed, right? Or in the tribulation. Right, in the middle of the tribulation yeah. when the Antichrist sits on the throne and claims to be God. Right, right. And the conversation that we had yesterday about Antiochus Epiphanes is how some people say that the abomination that causes desolation was a past event that happened around 165 and and Billy and I are discussing it, it that doesn't seem like a very good interpretation of well, that well it, it did it did happen they called that that's, that's what, what they, they called, called it that it. and so people get confused like why is Jesus talking about what Daniel talked about because it happened in 165 right. when he put 165 Ze- BC BC 200 yeah. years before this right. he put he brought Zeus in the temple and he sacrificed pigs right right and um and, and so why would Jesus be referring back to, to that a, and calling a past something event instead, instead of a future, of future event? event. Yeah. And so that's why that's what we were batting around. And I think I think Billy's right. I think I you know, I think it makes sense to me. I just that's just how some people, you know, some people interpret it because they see abomination that causes desolation and and they know it refers to Antiochus Epiphanes in one sixty five BC. So they understand so that. So he's probably so, saying when you see this again. Yeah. Because that was the old temple anyway. Well, this is, well, you know what? That's that's a great what you just said is really good. He's probably saying when it like that desolation yes. when you see that. What Daniel desolate, talked about. Yeah, yeah. what Daniel talked because you have an idea of what that looks like from history. So when you see that, then you look forward, and if that happens again, and the reason people think it's seventy yeah. A.D. because that's the, we don't have the third temple yet. The right, first right, it right, happened right. in the first temple. The second temple is burned down. Most people believe in the tribulation. Well, the Antichrist, it's clear he's going to sit on the throne, whatever you want to call that. That'll be in the third temple. So it's hard, it's hard to know. Right. But, right. So we don't know. Right. But at least that's what those words mean. Abomination means a, sacrificing a pig or putting something in there that's an abomination. Desolation means you leave. <laughs> so you, yeah, yeah, you've yeah, left, yeah, that's left good. it. It's gone. Des- desolate means um, empty. Yeah, right, right. That's good. So in 70 yeah. AD, it was empty. It's burned to the ground. Could be it, but I don't know. An abomination could be Roman soldiers burning the gold. It could be. Yeah, plenty, plenty right. of people smarter than me think that's what it was. No, no yeah, those are the, yeah, you re, you went you went home and, and kind yes. of did some research on last bit. night too. Yeah, yes. didn't you? Yeah, because of a lot of our conversation yesterday. So yeah, that that's good. That, that's a, I, I appreciate that. I think that's right on. But th- th- this this is an important event, and let me tell you why, but it, but I don't think it's important time-wise, well, it's important time-wise, but I don't think it's as important time-wise as it's important to understand what happened, and I think that's why what Billy said earlier was really important. Well, but, yeah, it's just that we, we brought up that thing yesterday, and yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you gotta, we have to explain and it. And I probably bit. confused everybody with it also. Well, it's just the name is yeah, like, yeah. who the heck is that? Yeah, yeah, I don't even say his name right. If you Google it and let them say it, it won't sound anything like Antiochus. <laughs> no, I think you're saying it right, but it's he's a he's someone in history that, um, you have to be a history major or a Bible student, a Bible student. to even know yeah. who this guy is. Yeah. So. Yeah, and he's and he comes up a lot in prophecy. The, mm-hmm. His name comes up a lot in prophecy. And Daniel doesn't mention him. Daniel talks about this happening, right? But doesn't ha- talk about him. An actual name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's so. Let's just. And if you have any questions about that reason, one of the reasons I guess I well, wanted they, to they do that it. is that you can ask us or Google or whatever, and ask us more if you want to as we go through as we're talking about what our prayer concerns are. I, I had a phone call this morning from a gentleman, and I mean that that very seriously, a gentleman. This man is a gentleman. I, uh, I got a phone call from a gentleman this morning who um, said, if you talk about politics, I'm not going to listen today. <laughs> 
Well, we haven't so far. And I said, okay, it's okay, but but I think that I but we talked about that a little bit on the phone. He and I, uh, as I was driving in today, and um, and because I have a hands free thing, so I can listen to it on the radio, you know. So it was not breaking any laws. I wasn't touching my phone or anything. Just want you to know that as a driver. And so, um, and so we get to the place um, in our conversation where um, we decide that it's it's a good thing for us to at least talk about. Yeah, yeah. It's a good place for us to talk about the issues that are brought up um, because I think that our Christian faith and the way we study the Bible, the way we understand God, I really believe with all my heart, should, I mean truly, should influence the way we vote, influence the way we choose things. And, and um, you know, one of the things that they talked about there were several things i thought the debate was really good i thought it was handled well i i'm not crazy about some of the questions and i and i really who was the moderator of this one susan somebody i don't know okay. who she was it wasn't you, mike wallace no i didn't no, watch no, you didn't watch it yeah, it was really good i thought they they behaved themselves pretty much um uh so anyway if you it, but th there were a couple of things in there that i i think were for me and, and you can choose your own topics from that if you want but one of them was i think we should as christians i think you should be interested or i think we should at least look at with interest um at the conversation of packing the court <laughs> you know because that makes a big difference for 150 years we've had nine justices and supreme court justices for 150 years and if all of a sudden you don't like the makeup of the court, whether it's too liberal or too conservative, and then you decide, you know, we should, it, the court's never supposed I'm, to. You open. know, I never even heard of stacking the court until you taught me that. Oh, really? Yes, no. Yeah, yeah. well, what, what, what they, what. I didn't know you could change numbers. Yeah, well, there's no number in I the never Constitution. Learned, I never learned that in civics class. Yeah. I thought nine was it. Yeah. Because it was an odd number. Yeah, there's no number in the Constitution. You can put as many as you want. Well, that's so, news to me. So this is the deal. If if we, they say, okay, in the next four years, is it going to be, instead of nine, is it going to be is it going to be 13? Or is it going to be right. whatever? Yeah. And so we start adding... Your side. Your side. I'm surprising someone hasn't done this already. Well, I'm sure they've thought of it, but nobody's had the. Is it because more statesmanship than now? Well, maybe, yeah, or whatever it is. But but when when pushed on that subject, the Democrats will not answer whether they're going to do that or not. That's that's a really big problem to me, and I think I think there's only one reason not to answer it. And the only reason not to answer it is because the answer you give will offend too many people. And I think people in America are going, wait a minute, we're not for that. We're, we, don't, we don't think that's okay. Do we have a say in it or no? Well, we, only by electing our officials. So, so but <laughs> if you're hyper one right or left, I don't care. If you're hyper one or left, you probably think that's a good idea. But I can't imagine that the majority of the Americans kind of in the middle, who are, more, who are the majority of the Americans, or they used to be. I think they still are. Uh, I can't imagine that you would think that it would be okay to 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 change the number of justices yeah. so that you could legislate from. That's what they're trying to do is legislate from the Supreme Court bench, and and that's not what the bench is for. The bench the, the bench is is to interpret the law. It, and didn't you say that we used to vote for the justices? Well, it used lots to be popular of popular vote. Lots of people. Now it's about. But I saw a new poll that said it's, it's about twenty five percent. No, yeah, I mean, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Back yeah, in the eighteen hundreds, yes, 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 we yes, voted yes, directly yes, yes. for the Supreme Court. Yeah, and then it became an appointment. An appointment from the president. Yeah, it changed. I, I believe I have that right. Somebody so, can check me on that and see, but so. I believe I have that right. But anyway, yeah, it's it's it it's it's a big issue, and it's a big issue because, again, we talked about about <laughs> originalists. And we talked about people who interpret, think this thing's a living document and we're supposed to let time change its meaning. And and when you do that, if you do that with the Constitution, you do that with the Bible, you do that with anything, you get yourself in trouble. And it has lots and lots of implications for many things that Christians care about, especially things like abortion and all things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's it's a big deal. So just pray. I don't want to spend all day long talking about that, but... 
that that's a big issue, I think, and it should be a big issue to the to uh, at, at least a conservative and at least uh, for sure a believer in Christ, because, uh, you know, I I think that what we're doing with some of the laws that we've created, what we're doing is we're creating a society that is so anti-God that it's it's unbelievable. It's not just it's not just um, I mean, it's just anti-God. I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> you know, have you ever thought that Roe versus Wade was 1972, I think? Yeah, look well, at we had, But we had a Republican president. Right, right. But but we had eight years of Kennedy and Johnson. So is is that, they put the people on the court that did that? Because they must have had a court that would that was uh, liberal, not It was five to four. Roe versus Wade was five to four. So, but so, that yeah. was not Nixon's court then. No. Even though he was no. president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you have to understand that too. No matter who the president is, People it, are on for life till they die. Ruth right. Bader Ginsburg just recently died. Right. She was not Trump's justice. No, no, no. She was very, she, she was she, very liberal. But she person. was put on a law, probably yeah. Clinton or somebody. I don't know who put her on. So yeah. once you put someone on, they could be on for 30, 40 years. Well, at least. Yeah. Well, th- well, this person, if, if this person gets, if, if you're not, a, if you don't want this person, then you should go vote. If you want this person, you should go vote. I, I mean, really, it should motivate because us. Because it's a 40-year conversation. Well, it's at least a 40-year conversation because yeah. she's a young lady. Right. I mean, as, as far as judges or justices yes. are yes. concerned, she's yeah. a young lady. And so... So when a president gets... It, it, that's a legacy for a president when they get... That's that, their biggest legacy. Yeah, how many they can put on the court. Yeah, and... and uh, yeah. So anyway, I just I just think that's a big deal for us, and I think we should pray about it, and I think we should go vote. You, you should really exercise your right. And... And I, you know what, I, God is still in control no matter who wins, but I, but I think we have to realize that we have a responsibility in what happens in, for some reason, look, I don't know, Billy explain this to me theologically, because I can't get it. I don't know why God chooses to say, I'm going to work with humanity. <laughs> You're talking about his sovereignty versus our free will. Yeah, I'm not yeah, going to be able to explain that either. Yeah, God, where like, does my free will stop and his sovereignty begin? Yeah, where does that happen? Because I'm telling you what, I mean, his sovereignty is sovereign over everything. The flood was pretty sovereign. Yeah, the flood was pretty sovereign. <laughs> my free will didn't seem to matter about that if yeah, I was alive then. But he gave us an option not to be involved that we chose oh, not oh, to. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. We always have an option. And that's the thing right now. He's, he's working with us as the United States of American population who's 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 um, affirmed to vote at a certain age. He's working with us so that we can, I think, just like the Jews were supposed to tell people about Yahweh back mm-hmm. then, Christians are supposed to tell people about God now. And, and I think we do that with the way we act politically. And I really do. And uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, just just look at all that. That's all. I don't want to really the, the this. vote you yeah. should make is for Christ. You need to yes. you need to choose Jesus and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, because yeah. the court's going to change, the president's yeah, yeah. going to change, the debates are going to change. Yeah. You know, during the new during the 50s when well, we that's were, really true. When we were born, the biggest thing was there's uh, there they didn't have ICBMs, but they were they had rockets. Right. They were bo- going to bomb the world to smithereens. Right. And people would say, "What kind of god would allow that?" But you're really asking, "What kind of god <laughs> would create a man Who's so intelligent they can rise to this level? Right. Are you accusing him of creating us curious and intelligent? Yeah. We're the sinful ones who yeah, used yeah. it that way. Yeah. yeah so now right. you have a vote, um, and and you have a choice on how to use it. And you can vote for Jesus and say, "I'm going to follow you, and I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to protest. You know, you, yeah. and you, I'm going to love people." Those are the votes for Jesus. Right. Is when you when you um, allow him to work through you. But the world, he already told us we'd have troubles in the world. Right. right. Well, he told us there's going to be a tribulation. Right. So and we're going to talk more about it. Absolutely. Yeah. How do we? How do we? Do we get to the tribulation in a friendly way, or a, you know, does the world get worse or better? I mean, it's, well, again, it's one of those. One of those. It, it depends on who you are. It depends on yeah. if you're post millennial or pre millennial. Right. If it, because in post millennial theology, and by the way, there's there's scripture that honestly, I'm, I'm just telling you, we maybe. Should, there's a book that that takes all four views and it reviews all four views and it critiques all four views from the other views and it's amazing, and and that book I'll, I'll I, it's Klaus I think is the writer of it I, can't, I don't you, remember you the should title. go through that book but, on yeah. Sunday morning and just empty out the church yeah <laughs> that's what would happen that's why I'm giving I'm not I'm not going to teach it I'll just you read it if you want to know would empty out the yeah church. but all four views have biblical credence they do yeah, yeah and so so the bottom line is this. Which one are you going to choose? I don't know. But if you're a post millennialist, you this is what you believe. You believe the world's going to get better before Jesus comes, 
if you're a plane. Well, that's, well, that's Darwin. We're evolving into better creatures. Well, we don't not look, really Darwin, but yeah. We don't look better. <laughs> right, right. Or if you're a premillennialist. No, like, I don't mean their Darwin, but Darwin said evolution. Yeah, yeah Darwin said We're that. evolving yeah, yeah, yeah. into a higher form, whether yeah, yeah. we know, you know, it's, uh, but, it's 1984. But the reason we're going to get better and better and better is because there's going to become a great, revel a great revival. Oh, my goodness. I thought I'd turn that down. Anyway, a great revival. And with this great revival, what's going to happen is that, that there's going to be all these people come in and then Jesus comes. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's going to get better. That a millennial place. reign. Yeah, 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 kind yeah, of yeah. Thing. yeah. Excuse me. I'm going to turn that off. <laughs> that's not an impossible view, but but as we sit in this pandemic now. Yeah, it looks impossible now, it's, doesn't it? Well, I, even if it is possible, I'm just saying that the tribulation is going to be bad. The you, Bible says yes. that will be bad. We're not in the tribulation now, but um, I'm just saying as Christians, we should follow Jesus, let the chips fall where they may, because whenever the tribulation is, and whether we're here or not, it's a bad time, and yeah. he's not a bad God. Right. This is this is the way he works. I, it's so good to have Billy. I just walk yeah. off, and he keeps up there. Thank you so much. I love I my brother. Look at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, we're going to pray. Was that the person who talked, the gentleman? No, no, there was two scam calls right in the middle of this. I, I thought the gentleman was calling and saying, you're talking about the court. <laughs> I don't care. I told, I told him, if you don't want to listen, I love you. No problem. You're my brother. If you want to listen, great. Stay we'll go there. from 102 views to 101. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> We love you. I, 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 and I don't mean I'm not making fun. We're not exactly promise, burning I'm not it up. Fun. Yeah, we're not burning it up. There's not. We don't have thousands of people anyway. <laughs> but anyway, look, this is this is really good because because there will be this millennial reign. There will be this great 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 um, uh, uh, revival and lots of people. The fullness of the Jews. All these right. people will come in. So it'll be it'll be a great time. And then Jesus comes. And there's biblical credence for that. There's a biblical conversation for that. You see this with yeah. even dogs or cats where they're dying and all of a sudden they get this energy and yeah. then they die. And, <laughs> and unfortunately we see this with cancer where yeah, people yeah, yeah. Uh, overcome it and boom, they die. So yeah. it might be that way that we have a great revival mm -hmm. and that the, everything's good and then boom, here it comes. Yeah. So, of course. Which would make there's sense. A, there's a pattern. For yeah, that. which would make sense because... Jesus doesn't want to leave us here one because he knows how difficult it is to live here. Mm -hmm. So so he's getting us out of here. So I understand right. that. Yeah. You know. And then if you're premillennialist or a dispensational premillennialist, those are two different things by the way. When you but either even eat both of them have this conversation, then this is what happens. <laughs> the world gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and, worse, and then Jesus comes cuz he's going that's enough. Right. So, and, and then if you're an all millennialist, ah, if you put the word A or the letter A on the front of anything, like it means not, okay? So it's not a millennium. It doesn't mean that they don't believe that there's a, a reign of Christ. It means that they believe there's no earthly reign of Christ. And this all millennial means that that Jesus, between Jesus' first coming and second coming, is the millennial reign of Christ because he's reigning as God. So I don't, and there's credence for that. So anyway, I, whatever yeah, I'm, you believe. Uh, I'm A interested in this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in this conversation. A interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A he, means he's, I know, he's not interested in this. But what happens during that time is, and he'll get interested, <laughs> is good and evil begin to grow together. It's like they have equal growth. So there's more good and there's more evil, and it's just more and more and more of it until Jesus comes. So anyway, so that's. Well, that sounds like what's happening. Well, well no, nah, not really, though, because there's not more good. I, don't, I see more evil, though. So, well, that's what, so it, again, it depends on when you're living. It, even, either any, any one of these things, before, the, before World War uh, II, everybody was all millennialist in the church because everything was nice and great and easy, and, and they, and, or right. post millennialist. Well, the, well, the 20s, yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a boom. Yeah, yeah. So, until yeah. 29. Yeah. yeah, so it depends on even when you live when one of these is popular or not, if you study it. So anyway, that's all important. Why is it important to our conversation today? Because it tells, it talks about end times, and that's what we're going to talk about. So let me just give you this so that you know straight up. The conversation we're going to come to this with today is a premillennial conversation. Right, and my Bible evidently is premillennial. Right, right, I just right, found right, that out. Right, right, right. So we're going to come to us from a premillennial view. So that's the view Which is, that you're going it, to get. It's, in, it's and the in, predominant in, view today. In uh, modern Christianity. Yeah, mainstream yeah, yeah, Christianity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, I just have one thing to say about all millennial. <laughs> it's like this. Uh, millennial. <laughs> Look, all millennial. Eh, millennial. Look, I have a tendency to be more all millennial than anything, personally. Uh, so that's, but he, you know, he doesn't want to listen to me. Eh, <laughs> <millennial>. <laughs> ah, 
no. go away. No, I'm a millennial. You know, you know, yeah, I know. You know, he wants me to just go away. He wants me to be like that fly on Pence's head last night. If you saw the debate, that wouldn't he go away. Yeah, it would like for a, like two minutes. Wait, it was, did he do anything about it? No, it, he didn't feel it. You know, it was just on top of his head. And, so that guy, he, no one heard a word he said. Yeah, they because, were because his hair is white and, and a black and fly. fly. <laughs> It was pretty funny. I was praying for him. Lord, help the fly to go away. Yeah, Finally, yeah. I did it. <laughs> that's a, there's a spiritual aspect of that. I know, right? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Whoa. But I think there is. I think that's a spiritual thing. Well, I know you guys will think I'm nuts, but I think well, that is. Well, Beelzebub is called the Lord of the Fly. Yes. I, 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 amen. Yeah, Preach it, brother. There's a fly on your head. That's I know. A, that's a weird thing. So so Satan's trying to, to distract oh, yeah. people from hearing what he's saying. That's yeah. the point. And mm-hmm. I think that's true. So anyway, and, uh, and I don't even remember what was being talked about during that time because I so so he's right, yeah. You don't remember the debate. You remember the fly. Yeah, I remember <laughs> the fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, look, let's pray. Let's okay. pray for our country. And and anyway, I'm I'm going off. Billy's going. Get over that. We got to get. We got to get to this. So we. Gotta well, no, get this is <laughs> harder than this is. I'm I'm not I'm not excited to get to this either. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's really smart. He'll tell us all about it. <laughs> thank you, Father, for this day. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for this word. We thank you for what it means to us. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I pray, Father, that you would open our understanding. Lord, you, you ta- I believe your word, and your word says you will teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance. And I believe that. Mm-hmm. I believe that you'll teach us all things. I believe your Holy Spirit will come and teach us all things as we go through this. And so today, Father, I pray that that would happen, that you would teach us all things, that this would become very evident and and that people that are interested in the end times, Lord God, would see what they need to see out of the scripture today, would get the information they need that you want to provide for us, and that it would change our behavior. We also pray for our country. We pray for our presidential election. We pray, Father, for for all the things that will happen. We pray that we take our own responsibilities and do the things that we say we're going to do. And uh, and I just pray, Father, that you would bless us to know your will for our country. And I pray that you would bless our leaders. I pray that you would be with the First Lady and the First Family and with President Trump. And I ask that you would bless them with health. Thank you for taking care of him and thank you for helping get better so quickly. Thank you for that, Lord Jesus. And I pray against this this virus in the name of Jesus. I pray against it in Jesus' name and every evil intention that it has. has I pray against it in the name of Christ. I come against it in the name, the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, for ministering there. And I thank you, Lord God, for letting us learn the lessons that you have for us to learn in the midst of all these things that we're living through. Be with our families. Be with Billy, Lord God. Thank you for him. I really mean that, Lord. Thank you for Billy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for him being here and talking things through. And and I thank you for who he is. And I just thank you that he is with us today to to help us open your word. In Jesus' holy and precious name, thank you, Father. Amen. Yes, Lord, just to agree with this prayer, I pray now as we open the word. This is what happens when we go line by line like this. We can't can't pass over things and we can't say, oh, well, too difficult. (laughs) So yeah, here we are. Yeah. We're in a we're in a difficult uh, section. And I just pray that you would be the God of this and send your Holy Spirit to, to teach us. Because like Rick said, neither one of us could be sure of any of this. We right. just have we just know what we've heard. So uh, bless this. Bless our time in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, did I put it up there? It's Matthew. Oh yeah, you did earlier. Yeah, Matt, it's Matthew. We're on twenty. We're actually in twenty three now. The twenty four twenty three. Oh, that's in the verse. verse. Yeah, not chapter. We're done yeah, with yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, fifteen. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're at twenty chapter 24, and we've done 15 again, so we're going to 23. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Can okay. Read it for us? Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. And this is the Jehovah's Witness one. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he's in the desert, do not go out, or look, he's in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. And the Jehovah's Witnesses say that Jesus came in 1914 and he's in an inner room directing their church. And it's funny, he says if they say he's in the inner room. Yeah. And Don't they actually them. have him in an inner room. <laughs> uh, they, they won't take you there, though, will they? I don't know. <laughs> they, they won't take me in. They won't no, even come to my house yeah, anymore. But, yeah. uh, right. Okay. So let's. They let's, need to read their Bible better and not call it. You should say he's in a 
antechamber, not an inner yeah, room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they should make something up. A about different, a different room. Yeah, Put him yeah, somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, he's in a mansion somewhere. Yeah. If those, it, it says, though, if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. That's twenty-two. But um, for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. That's we talked about that last time. Verse twenty-three. At that time, I'll read a different version. At that time, if anyone says to you, "Look, here is the Messiah," or "There he is," do not believe it. So th this can be confusing for people uh, because Billy and I are saying every day, look, here's the Messiah. We're saying every day, here's Jesus, <laughs> right? Right. What, and, and what, but let me tell you what this is talking about. It's talking about if there's a Messiah that's not the Jesus of the Bible, <laughs> okay? We know that Jesus, the Messiah of the Bible, is the Messiah. We know that. We know who he is. We've been talking about it. That's why I think it's so important that we have gone line by line all the way through here because every turn we've made in this study, we've seen everyone else know that Jesus is the Messiah. Different right. people from different classes with you know mm -hmm. of people, different different intellectual levels, different economic levels. We've seen people all along say that's the Messiah. So and Jesus calls himself the Messiah. And we took you to some scripture in John a couple of days ago that that they, they they Jesus says why you why you want to destroy me for the miracles I've done and he said they said no because you called yourself God right that's why so so they think he's called himself God so Jesus is the Messiah so what this is talking about if if there's ever a time that somebody says look here's a Messiah don't believe it because you already have the Messiah. And I think there's a physical Messiah yes. because he's going to be false Christ. And yes. so I would yes. say, yes. the Mormons yes. say, look, um, you know, Joseph Smith talked to him and look, right. Right. this and that. And he's saying, well, don't. don't. And, there, and yeah. I know Jim Jones probably was the Messiah type figure. There's a lot of Messiah type figures yeah. that people follow. Yeah, yeah. And, and what they do, again, is they mix truth with lies, which yeah. makes it all a lie. You can't mix the truth with the lie and not have everything be a lie. Uh, it just it taints everything. A lie is a stain on the truth, and so and so. Please look where he says, "For the sake of the elect, those days will be short." At that time, okay, when this is happening, at that time, if some if anyone says to you, "Look, here's the Messiah," or "There he is," do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive. So these people are going to do what Jesus did. But not with his power, right? No, it's the same thing that the Pharaoh's uh, magicians did, the Magi. Yeah, the, yeah Mo, what they yeah. did, what Moses did, which was ridiculous because they did bad things in their own country. Right, right. Like, good for you. I could do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and it says, if possible, even the elect. So the so the, the elect have to be careful. You, it's not just it's not just people who don't know Christ. It's people who know Christ can be easily distracted from Christ, mm -hmm. and 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 I mean, there's a how many people in the church today, Billy? Since you've been doing this this um, thing on Sunday nights with with counterfeit the, religions and right. stuff, how many people have you discovered say, well, they're not bad? When you're talking about someone, well, before people. I did this, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, and yeah, now they and now they know. Now right. I've kind of uncovered who they are. Right, but before that, right? Oh, before you, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they were. They say, "Oh, aren't they saved?" Or yeah, or they can come to my house, and I say, "Oh, no, 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 no." Yeah, no. yeah. And that's when I decided yeah. um, it's probably good to do something like this because they don't know. I'm not trying to teach people what to say to them. It's not. I'm you're just trying to show them that's trying to show them the error of their way. Yeah, don't yeah. don't don't follow them. Yeah, don't, yeah. Don't jump on their ship. Yeah. And he says, I've told you this ahead of time. So be careful. Look, be careful. Be careful who you listen to. If if anyone ever says to you, do not question me, or if anyone never says, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Right. Look, one of the great things I love about Billy is he's pretty knowledgeable. Um, but he, I, I but he will all apologize yeah, if all something is right. And, I, and I'm not as easy to apologize. Well, I that's what I came in today to say. Yeah, yeah. I looked up Antiochus, and some people do believe it's... I don't want to get back into him, right, but I was right. telling him yesterday, he said, 70 ideas. I said, no, no, no. And I said, oh, some people think that is. Yeah. So I didn't know that. Yeah. So I don't want to believe it, but I don't know. <laughs> I think well, here it's... It's because it's a bad interpretation, and it doesn't fit your, your scheme. Right. So yeah, well, why would yeah. other people think that? Yeah, right. The I think it, what's implied here, because Jesus uses hyperbole a lot about right. take out your eye, right. cut right. off your right. hand. Right. Right. He's saying they're going to deceive 
even the elect if possible. I don't think it's possible to deceive the elect. Right, right, so right. don't worry about being deceived. But be like like um, Sharon says, be ready, know your word, in and out of season, and then no one will get you. Yeah, you can be a part of the elect and be immature in your understanding about God. Yes, yes. And oh, that's yeah. the problem. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's the problem. The elect, that's in Hebrews. It says the, we should yes. be past the elemental things. You should be teaching others by right, now. Right, right, right. So that's there's the, tons of warnings and tons of encouragement. Same thing, I guess. Warning, encouragement. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Be a Christian. If you want to read that, that's Hebrews 5, 11, all the way through the end of the chapter into 6, for chapter 6 up to verse 8. That whole section because of a lot of those Hebrews, they were Jews, are going yeah. backwards into religion. Right, right. And he says, by this time, you ought to be teaching the elementary truths all over again. Yeah. But now you need some, and that means the ABCs of the faith. Yeah, we, we, yeah. you should you should be yeah. teaching the class, not getting the ABCs. Right. So, so even the elect, even those people who claim to be Christians, who are Christians, who are true Christians, doesn't mean that the, all those people are are mature in I mean I'm not very mature in my understanding I got I'm telling you I'm not well there are some and things so, like the conversation we had yesterday with that person about Elizabeth and Mary doesn't affect who cares it does it's a who cares conversation but what right. I care about is right. you're reading your Bible that you can that, that it, it says yeah. something about that person they're not on the elementary things they're going deeper yeah they're looking at things that other people haven't seen yes. to look at yeah, so right. th- yeah. that's a good thing when you look at the Bible in a deeper way and you have questions about stuff right right and and know that you're not always going to be right, no. <laughs> and it's okay. Questions it's okay good. to be wrong. It's okay. It, you don't have to be embarrassed about being wrong. I mean, look, the only person that's not wrong is God. Right. <laughs> Everybody else, the greatest minds on the planet, have been wrong. So don't be embarrassed about asking questions, or don't be embarrassed about digging into the scripture and thinking that because your job is to is to fall in love with Christ more and more every day. It's your, your experience needs to grow, your personal experience, your prayer experience, your scripture experience, that part of your life that's a Christian, if you're the elect, it needs to grow because there's going to become a time, in maybe in our lifetimes, and a lot of people think it with all the craziness in the world, there's going to be a time when, you know, we're going to get a lot of, lot of uh, negative pushback. Yeah. You know, and we already are, aren't we? I mean, Christian and the fact, you know, and you can you can cry out to God, argue with God, yell at God. It means you have a relationship with Him. We we talked yeah. about this. Yeah. Christ Amen. left the temple, yeah. and He said, "I've left you desolate." The Jews do not have a relationship with God. They think they do. So the Jehovah's Witness, Mormons, whoever, because they're t- he he doesn't have one with him, with them. But you have one, and right. so. Um, you know, it's like if husband and wife say we argue all the time. Oh, you have a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. The ones who get divorced don't argue all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so, yeah. so, 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 so struggle with the Bible. Right. That's a good thing. Yeah. And th- I, li- I think this next verse is in, in verse 26 is important. It says, so if anyone tells you there he is out in the wilderness, do not go out. Or here he is in the inner room. Do not believe it. Now, look, what does that mean? That means don't chase after those thoughts. Don't put don't put that stuff in your head. When the Jehovah's Witnesses come to your door, don't have a conversation with them. You don't need to do that. You're just gonna if you're not mature and you don't un- don't understand what they believe, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get confused, because a lie is always going to confuse you. And and so I think what he's saying is he says if anyone tells you there he is in the wilderness. Do not go out. Don't don't give any attention to it. Don't let it don't let it influence your life in any way, because you're going to end up being confused. And I think that's what he's talking about. I think he doesn't want us to chase after all of these ideas and philosophies and people, you know. And, and that's that's what happens a lot. And, and, and Billy's Billy's against this. He's been against this ever since I know him. He doesn't. He's not. A, he doesn't like people who who respect other people. And what I mean by that is he goes... I lift them up. Yeah. yeah, don't lift that speech. People up. That's why it's a problem for Billy when I say that I'm glad he's here. He gets all, but I am. I well, I pulled down uh, the men's group yeah. last yeah. night. I pulled Peter down, not yeah. Peter Morales, Peter yeah. the Apostle, yeah. 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 because we read Second Peter and Dave was uh, Martinez was saying, um, like, I don't know if I could do this. He knows he's going to be crucified, and here he is. You know, could you imagine giving your life for this? And then I kind of brought up, well, he saw the transfiguration because he, he, right, Peter right. talks about that. He didn't forget that. He saw some amazing things. And then I said, Dave, would you die for your wife? He goes, yes. I go, well, then you would, wouldn't would you die if you'd seen the living Christ and been right. with him all this time? So I said, don't, let's not lift Peter up too high for right, what he's right. about to do. Right, right, right. And that's, so yes, I, I, I'm, these are just men. 
they're no better or worse than us. Yeah. And, and So don't chase them. No, don't. That's the point. Don't chase them. And right? the other thing is he's telling you, if when I come back, you'll know. You'll know. Yes, it's, yeah. it's, you don't have to have somebody come to your door and say, guess what? Here's the secret thing about this kind of stuff. And people want to give you... I don't you have the, a secret information. Yeah, here's the secret information about Jesus. And yeah. do this and tap your foot and eat peanuts. No, he's, he says everyone will know. Don't, don't, don't go for that. Yeah. Uh, for as lightning that comes from east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Now, that, there's been lots of conversation about those kinds of words, right? Okay, well, I'm just, I think it's, a, it's saying who misses that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. that's what that he's talking about. You'll know. That's and what then he, he follows yeah. it up with another one. A carcass. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we use that word badly. Yeah. Because, you know, people call something. Anyway, we're never, we're never a carcass. Yeah. Okay. Roadkill. E- <laughs> even when we're dead, we're not a carcass. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But um, a carcass is out in the desert, and you can, and you can't, you can see it because the um, vultures, but, whoever they are, the carrion birds. Yeah, the vultures. Are, and I said, and so there's a double meaning here. He says, where the carcass is, the eagles will be gathered together. And because when Jesus comes back, he says, not only will you see me, like you can see the vultures over the yeah. thing, there's going to be judgment. Cause, right, yeah, right, right. Uh, he's coming back with judgment the second time. So I don't believe people who say they have the special, he's coming back on this day, or, or yeah. you know, it's all, it, you have to join our religion, or you have to be baptized in our pool. It's all very, you know, it's, it's, a bigger, he's, it's, it's bigger than that. Yeah. Stick, stick to the Bible and Jesus. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, I think this is I think this is telling us that we have a certain we have an understand and we have an understanding both um, of the authority of Jesus now but when Jesus comes that authority is going to be so much different than anything you his authority his power yeah. is going to be so much greater than anything you've ever seen that even these people who are maybe healing the sick maybe make helping the blind to see and having people who are deaf here, even those people who are doing those kind of miracles, that authority and that power is going to pale in experience to right. the authority and power that Christ is going to bring with them. I you, think if, if, yeah. if we're alive, yeah, yeah, when yeah, he comes yeah, back, yeah. I think most every Christian will go, oh, it's real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be, we have a, a, so much faith, uh, <laughs> but when we <laughs> see him, we'll go, oh, it's real. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and we'll cry or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah people, and then people maybe the people who don't cry. know him will say, oh, it's oh, it's real. real. <laughs> yeah. Well, th- th- wouldn't, wouldn't there be a sense of that if you were in Dread. the presence of God? Yes. Because, I mean, even people who loved God, like Isaiah in Isaiah 6, remember the, the story? He said, I'm Isaiah a man said, of unclean lips. Yeah, because, woe yeah. is me, for I'm a right. man of unclean lips, and I dwell amongst a people of unclean lips. Yeah, this is, yeah. yeah the, and I, oh, Job, you always talk yeah. about Job, because yeah. now I know you. Yeah, you know, yeah, okay, yeah, stop yeah. talking, God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's really funny. Yeah, don't talk anymore, because I've had my fill. I can't do this anymore. Yeah. But because, because that's what it's going to be like when you're in the presence of God, when you when you see the manifestation of Jesus, it's going to be, there's going to be so much love. That it, you're not going to care about the miracles. Well, first of all, you won't care about them because you don't need them anymore. Mm-hmm. So, but secondly, you won't care about them because you're going to be in this, enveloped in this love like you've never been enveloped before. But if you don't know him, you're going to be horrified that you said no to him. I and mean, really... It's it's every knee shall bow, <laughs> every tongue will confess. You know, it's um, the nat- there's the natural world and there's the spiritual world, and we we are spiritual creatures, but we're earthy. We're made right, of the right, earth. Right, right, right. So we get tired. We get tired. Ty- people tire some people out, or people get tired of traffic or this or that. But the spiritual world, I don't think we can handle this much of the spiritual world, the, the good and the bad. Because I fought demons before, and it's like exhausting. And being in the presence of God will be great love, but it. I, it's so much for us in these earthen bodies, I think, because be, are people slain in the spirit and, and doesn't and don't they and angels they go oh, no? I think it's it's just we've seen it whether you believe it or not you've seen just and people are like you know they they the physical body can't take the glory of God, otherwise it, 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 yeah 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 he's a he's a piece of smoke or something it or he's, overwhelms or he's us. some oil or I mean he's we make him in little doses but <laughs> what true. what would we, we do, do if, make him in if God doses. actually That's showed true. up. We like to think, hey, I'm going to ask God about this. Oh my gosh, if God shows up, it you know these fleshly tents would just I don't know have a heart attack or something. Well, yeah, we're we are not 
I don't think our flesh, without Christ, I don't think our flesh is capable of being in the presence of God. No, I agree. Because he is so holy. But and, the demonic he, yeah. is so evil, and right. you are in the, and, and right. that presence is pretty powerful. That presence is very that powerful. Is a, yeah. It, yeah, that's yeah. a powerful presence yeah. that we've all felt. Right. And um, how much more powerful is God? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I just think uh, when he comes, uh, like he, the lightning or whatever he comes, it's like an earthquake. Who who can fight an earthquake or withstand a real earthquake? Right, right. Or if you've ever been in a lightning storm or any a tornado, any of those that we call them natural disasters, man is, is just a uh, meaningless. We are. <laughs> There's nothing you can do, right? When the earth's shaking, what are you going to do? The very foundation of where you're on is shaking. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's who God is. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, more than that. Even. Yeah, God. That doesn't even describe him. Yeah, but but that's just a comparison. For, uh, yeah, it's a compare. It's it's. Yeah, and there's no earthly comparison. Like we talked about yesterday, or I did anyway in my prayer. How do I praise you? I don't even know what it means to praise you because you are so. There's no word I have to describe who he is to praise him. We want more so of God, yeah. and he gives us what we can handle. Right, right. Because I got to tell you, it's exhausting to have all, you know, to, I, we just don't know what it is. Right, right. We're so weak. Yeah. So We're anyway, so he's coming. God, yeah. He's coming, and he's not coming with a name tag and a. And a <laughs> You know. And an entourage and all that. He doesn't need an entourage. He's showing up. Yeah, the whole world is going to see yeah. it. You will know. Yeah. You'll know. And you say, well, okay, that can happen because of computers and technology and all that. You know what? God doesn't need any of that yeah. to show. If God wants to show himself, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. If he wants to show himself at the North Pole and the South Pole at the same time, he will. He's, that's God. That's the there's you're not going to see there's nothing that's ever going to be seen. You know he talks like about uh, so, birth pangs uh, yeah. that these are the birth yeah, pangs. Yeah, yeah, and he, yeah, so he yeah. talks about a pregnant woman actually in Second Peter all right, right. whatever they do too because that was last night. But and I'm not a woman, but I can't imagine the lowest woman in the lowest level class ever who's had a baby who didn't know when it was coming. Right, right. No woman says when will it come. You'll know. <laughs> You'll know. It, you don't have to have like signs and people come and say do this. You'll know when the baby's coming. Yeah. And so we'll know when right. Jesus is coming. Yeah. You, He's you, going to talk about a fig tree. I yeah. Mean, not the, today. The, but. Well, yeah. But, but he knows how to communicate with us. That's what you need to know. So mm -hmm. when he communicates, it will be different. And it won't be... It won't be like, boy, you should go to the first church of whatever. Yeah, he's there. Go check go, this go out. Go check this out. That's mm -hmm. not that. Nah. Okay, he might be. He might be in that church. Well, his presence really, he, he, but, is fine. But he, have, he's, that's not the second coming. That's the point. You, you and know. as bad as the pandemic is right. and all this yeah, stuff, that's not this the, is not. Uh, anyone you think is not the Antichrist because right. you'll know the yeah, Antichrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it says, and this is one of the things that we do. Now, see, we've seen all this. We've seen all this happening. We've seen it starts with the abomination that causes desolation. It starts with that. Whatever that event is, it starts with that. And then and then he says you, you, you need to think about fleeing from that because that's going to be horrible in itself. You need to take flight. That's how horrible it's going to be. And then he says there's going to be these messiahs that come up because everything's so hor horrible. There's going to be these charlatans that show up and say, I'm the messiah, and they're going to do things to, to gather a following of people. Don't go. Don't go. If, if, if you, if, you know, look, you don't chase it. Just don't go. Don't give it any attention. Just focus on Christ. So when that all happens, that's going on. If anyone tells you that he's in the wilderness, don't go. If he's here, don't go. If he's in a house, don't go. Okay? So it's, so when you see that he says, whenever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. And, and that's, how, that, that's how it's going to be. It's going to be a very visible. very visible for us. There's an interesting thing about, there's a rock, because we passed over this, there's a rock city called Petra, which oh, is, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And in Petra, they have put the books of John. I would put Revelation, but little pamphlets of John, because they believe that when the Jews, because the Jews are oh, going to be yeah, saved, yeah, yeah. when they flee, they'll go east, and they'll go to Rock City, and they'll hide there during the tribulation. And they'll come to know who Christ is from the book of John. So those are people who are very, and they've hidden some food. They're very uh, Christian, biblical, and are taking right. this literally. Right. That right. They're, they're giving they're the fleeing right. Jews yeah. specifically a place to go. Because the Bible says that, that all Jews will be saved. That's what the Bible right. says. And it's only going to be a third Bible. of them from Zechariah. Right, but, right. but yes, it's yeah, yeah. basically Revelation is a rescuing of the Jews. Right. People call it the Revelation, and they say John the Revelator. Revelator, but it's really the revelation of Jesus. That's right, what it is. Right. If you yes, finish the, the revealing, book, the revealing of, of Jesus. The revealing of Jesus. Yeah. So I'd like to have that kind of faith that I would take it so literally. This, whether I'm an amillennialist or pl right, whatever right, millennialist right, I am, right, right, right. that I would prepare for that day for the people that I'm going to be dead, and those people, right. I would help them out with a guidebook. Right. Right. Pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, and if they're wrong, so what? Who cares? 
I mean, you know, it's the same thing with the yeah. Jews who were building utensils for the temple. That's a lot of faith, right? They, you know, I don't have that. And and but this is this is the trap we fall into. The trap I think is watch this in verse twenty nine. Immediately after the uh, the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. We 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 look for signs all the time, like blood moons and, mm-hmm. yeah. and like all that stuff. Right. And uh, and the heifer. Jonathan Cahn. Yeah, Jonathan Cahn. We look for those. And I think it's okay to look for those. And I think they those signs point us to some place. But look <laughs> The Shemitah. Yeah. If you yeah. If if you if you are a believer in Christ, I believe that what he's saying here is that is that this is not a hidden conversation this is out in the open right this is this is going to be something that takes place when jesus comes again it's and and there you're going to know it in your spirit see we have to remember something jesus speaks to our spirit he talks to us he he communicates with us the father communicates with us he teaches us all things and bring all th- brings all things to our remembrance. He will teach us anything we need to know. And he will let us know when these things are happening. And all of your brothers and sisters in Christ who you trust will have the same information as you. Yeah, they'll know too. Because it's not just you that's getting it. God doesn't. He's, God says he's not a, he doesn't prefer one man over another. He's no respecter of men, the way scripture says. You will get the information. Billy will get the information. You guys will tell it to me because I'm not that spiritual. You know, you this are- <laughs> this will be one of the reasons the Jews don't believe in Jesus is because they believe in corporate revelation, right, national right. revelation. And they go back to Mount Sinai where every man, woman, right. and child saw that. You didn't have to tell them, look what I saw. Right. So they don't like one person. Personal rev- yeah. yeah. Um, and so that's their whole thing. But this is going to be a national revelation right. where everybody's going to see it. Right. Someone might come to you and say, God told me this. And you could say, well, great. Wait till he tells me because yeah, I have yeah. a relationship yeah. too. We, we, we have a, our own audience. And that's, uh, that, you should do that with everything. I mean, I, there were one time that this, this so-called prophet, prophetess, this lady came to our house and said that she had some stuff for us. And I said, okay. So I listened. And I like it. And I said, well, I'm a prophet too and I don't agree with that. So... And and some people could say, well, that's haughty, or you didn't want to listen, or you didn't want to learn. It didn't it didn't set right with my spirit, not right. with my mind. And by the way, Jonathan, yeah. the so, Shemitah yeah. and Jonathan Khan, I'm not criticizing. These right. people aren't saying it happened. Right. They're saying their point. They say it looks like it's going to happen in September this and that. Yeah. And then when it comes to pass, you can say when it doesn't come to pass, you can yeah. say, well, I guess it didn't. Right. Or you can say he was right. Yeah. I, you won't I be saying that. Yeah, yeah. But they're not saying it has happened. They're, these these people who are writing books and stuff are saying we're getting very close right. and it and it looks like we're turning towards this but jesus is saying right look for these things right but you're not going to miss the actual thing the son of man is not a sign he is the he is right. the son of man when the right. son of man comes that's not a sign. i mean it says the sign but it'll actually be him appearing and and so when whenever there's a like for example whenever there's a eclipse of that eclipse of the oh, sun for sure people get all excited about that yes or a pandemic <laughs> or a pandemic but but i mean because of these words here it's the eclipse of the mm-hmm. sun and the mm-hmm. and the blood moon and all that yeah. kind of and stuff and these are all very biblical judgment words this is yeah. always ha- this is from right. daniel this is right. exactly the same words used in daniel, daniel yeah. and revelation right. so G- it's funny jesus is using i mean he's he's god but if you don't believe in jesus you read Daniel, which was written year, th- hundreds of years yeah. before Revelation, and they both use the exact same words. These are uh, these are you could have pulled this right off of Daniel, or you can pull it out of Revelation. So the, the reality here is the reality here is that something the sun will be darkened. It won't be like a regular eclipse. No. I don't I don't believe that. It's not just that. Well, I mean, the stars are going to fall from heaven. Yeah, I mean, this is this, and the the moon will not give its light. Well. <laughs> The moon, obviously, we know is a reflection of the sun. So right. if the sun is absolutely dark, it won't take but a few minutes for our our world to freeze. Mm. You understand that? The, the, this is not this is not gonna be this is not gonna be like anything you've ever seen before. If if the stars start falling from the sky, if the sun is completely dark, our Earth is gonna freeze in moments. Do you understand that? It's not gonna take long for that to happen. 
Because where, where, how do you think we? How do you think that things run the way they run? Because all the planets are in line, and it keeps gravity the way it's supposed. Gravity will be if everything will be affected. This is not. This is this. Is, even if it's for a one minute, it's going to have a huge catastrophic re- event. It's not going to be. I think that I, it's not going to be like. Okay. It's not, not going to be a localized flood or a tornado in New Orleans. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Be... Or even even at one on some place on the earth, they're going to have a, an eclipse. Right. You know, it's not going to yeah. be like that. Everybody is going to experience this. That's why it can't be. I mean, I don't know much about astronomy or astrology or whatever it is, but when you have an eclipse of the sun here, is it an eclipse of the sun everywhere on the earth? I mean, yeah, I don't know that either. Well, but, no, it uh, can't be. You because know, they can't, they're on the other side. Yes, yeah. because they're in darkness, so yeah. it can't be. So you understand what I'm saying? If I don't know much about it, but I know that much. When, right. when it's day here, it's night somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. So I, it can't be an eclipse for everything. So so this is this is different. The sun will be darkened. <laughs> This this is not not a solar, you know, that we've noticed that we've right. seen before. But people get excited about those events because they happen so rarely. And when they happen, I think everybody goes, "Oh wow, Jesus is coming." Well, okay, he might, but not because of that. <laughs> and in, 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 in ancient world, every time there was an eclipse, there's even a, a famous story by right. Mark Twain, right. a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court. And they think he's a, you know, they say bow down to him because he knows what the eclipse is because he says it's going to come. Because then they thought when that was happening, it was right out of here. The right, sun right, will go dark. Right, you know, of right. course. Yeah. But if you think about it, much as much as little as we know about science right now, me, if it's if it's day here, it's night somewhere on the planet. So this this is, the sun will be completely darkened. It, and besides, even in an eclipse, it's not the sun is not darkened. No, it, it's around the. You, yeah. you can see the ring or whatever. Mm-hmm. So this is this is not like that. The moon will not give its light. Okay. So if the sun was completely darkened, in those places that it's night, I wonder if they still have a moon sighting. Right, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. That's that would be interesting to know, right? The stars will fall from the sky. Well, we've seen that. We've seen falling stars, but you really haven't. <laughs> I mean, you don't see it when it happens. You see it years later because right. the stars are way off, right? right? Mm-hmm. So, but this is the stars are falling from the sky. You're gonna, it's gonna be. So, which means you're not gonna be able to see it if there's light. The only way you're gonna see the stars falling from the sky is if it's completely dark out. The sun will have to be completely shut off, like you turn off the lights in a room. So, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Well, of course they're going to be shaken. If <laughs> gravity's going to be different. Everything will be different if the sun does not shine. Do you know that, right? It, it, it's, it's, everything moves. Everything, everything moves with the orbit around the sun. So, all of these things, you won't have to say, is this it? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Right. You're not going to have to say, is this it? You're, I think you're going to go, wow, this is, this is, this is an event, <laughs> and, and, and we know what it is. There are a lot of people who don't know Christ at, in the beginning of this who won't have a clue what it is because it's just going to happen. It's going to happen. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. So all of this has to happen before Jesus comes. That's what you have to look at. If there's a timeline here, and you take this literally or somewhat literally, all of this has to happen. It says, then, then, uh, it says, then will appear the signs of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the people of the (laughs) earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. Now, now look. Look at what our response will be, <laughs> even as Christians. Watch. It says, Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the people of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. What does that mean? Look, if, if, if let's say you're a, just for conversation, let's say you're a pre- or mid-trib person. The church is taken out before this happens. Then all this stuff takes place. But there are people on the earth who are given a chance to receive Christ before Jesus comes again. Right. So it says, so all the people of the earth will mourn. That means even the Christians will mourn. Why will we mourn? 
when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. Why will we mourn? <laughs> because look, this is what I'm talking about with a Messiah. This is one of the things, this is one of the things that Jesus tells us about other Messiahs that you can, look, when you're, in, when you're in the presence of God, he is holy and we are not. Even if we have been, even if we have the privilege of <clears throat> being covered with the blood of Christ, right. he is holy and we are not holy. We, we, we are saints. We are saved from our sin. We, we, the judgment of our sin is passed over us like the Passover, you know, like the Passover in the Old Testament. The judgment passes over us because Jesus' yeah. blood covers us and <clears throat> forgives us our sin. But we still know that we are not holy as God is holy. And when, and when a holy God comes into your midst personally, there's no other thing to do except woe is me. And that's when you'll know it's Jesus. Not that you're just a little convicted <clears throat> or you weep a little, but there will be a mourning, a godly sorrow like you've never had in your life if you're on earth when he comes again. Yeah, this, it's not like the light parade at Disneyland where you yeah. got to say, oh, that's starting in 10 minutes and they make an announcement. Yeah. No, this yeah. is going to be um, yeah. big, bigger than anything. You, you, you won't miss it. Yeah. So <clears throat> you want to finish the 31? Thing? Yeah, yeah. So uh, where, where's it? where am I at? Oh, with power and great glory. That's how it will come. Verse 31. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four corners, or excuse me, from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. So what does that mean? Well, the, that, I think that's uh, First Thess 4, where the trumpet will shout. That's, that's what um, Paul says. Right. The, the rapture. Yeah. Um, that's I guess that's uh, Daniel. Daniel's the trumpet one, right? Right, Daniel 7. Yeah. No, I mean, get, which angel is there? Gabriel is the warrior, Daniel. Who's the guy with the trumpet? Dan oh, Gabriel. 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 Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, this yeah. is Gabriel blowing a trumpet. The angel's coming. And uh, so it'll be a great trump. So let me ask you a question because we're going <clears> to <throat> go. But this is important. So is the church, in your opinion, is the church here when this happens, or is the church gone when this happens? Well, the church is being taken. Um, I believe the second coming, there's two second comings. There's the rapture, where he comes and he, he, he grabs the elect and goes with the trumpet. From, if I'm based that on First Thessalonians and other places. And then there's a tribulation, and I don't even think the Holy Spirit's here. Um, because the Holy Spirit, the church is the Holy Spirit. What will the world look like without a church? And then seven years later, Christ comes back with us on his horse, you know, all that. And he could judge the sheep and goat thing, and we have the thousand years. So I'm, yeah, premillennial. So, so a <clears throat> premillennial understanding, the church is still here. The ra this is the beginning of the rapture. Yeah, for me, yes. Yes, yes. this is the beginning of the rapture. Right. Some people would say <clears throat> this is after that. It right. doesn't really matter. You, you'll experience it if you're alive. Somewhere. He's coming to get you either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we, <clears throat> you should hope that Billy's interpretation, <clears throat> which I agree with. Well, it's more... Uh, more friendly to us, yeah. Yeah, you should hope <clears throat> that that's good. That's right. <laughs> the only one I don't understand, um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. the man says I'm sniffing too much. It's really loud. That's not going to help. Mm. Um, the only one I don't understand is the um, mid, because right. because then we could count down the days. Right. So that's weird. But um, it could be pre, it could be post, it could be. How would I know? But yes, I'm I'm the preacher of God. Someone way smarter than me, who I respect and teaches, was a mid, and I thought, what is what is that? And then we go back and forth on to every man an answer. So oh, yeah, these yeah, are yeah, these yeah, are difficult yeah. things. Yeah. But um, there's going to be a Trump, and he's going to take us away. Uh, not Donald Trump, but a trumpet blast. <laughs> and if you look at First Corinthians four, uh, Paul says, "I tell you a mystery: uh, not all will sleep. You know, uh, not all will die, but some. First, the dead will rise in Christ. You know, right, right. and then and we'll be taken and all that kind of stuff." So, so even if you're here or if you're not, okay, just Sharon was saying, just be ready. Well, that's the point, isn't it? But and and but this, you'll know it. That's what I want you to get. Yeah, at. this is an avoiding. This is a yeah. great thing for the cults. Uh, yes, I mean, for, you know, yeah, yeah, this to is understand Jesus saying, who you are. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do not listen to. Um, you'll know this. This is not going to be like anything you've ever experienced in your life. It will be, it will be as described. And, you're, and you will experience it 
if you're here on this earth, you will experience this just as it's described. And it will be such a, an, a, a I don't even know how to, it's, it's not even an exaggerated event. It's beyond that. <laughs> I don't even know what word to use to tell you how the event's going to be, but it's going to be so big <laughs> that you will not miss it. And I think that's what God is saying. And he, and he goes and he gives you this illustration of a fig tree that will get to Well, they asked the question. Yeah. They, he said, yeah. you see that temple, not one stone will be on it. They yeah. said, well, that's crazy. Yeah. When's this going to happen? Yeah. And he expands that's on it. Right. He tells them when it's... They ask the question, when will all this happen? And he tells them. And they don't understand it, neither do we. But he says, yeah, yeah. You know, he says it. Well, we don't understand it because we haven't experienced it yet. Well, we, yeah. we, we see the symbolism. We can go right. back to... We have the whole package. We've got the Bible. Mm -hmm. and so we can... And we've got computers. We can go... Bup, 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 bup. But what I mean by understand <laughs> yeah. it is... Yeah. Right. He tells them... He says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus says, how can a man be born again? And he goes, if I tell you earthly things and you don't understand it, how can I, how you understand heavenly things? Right. And so I think there's some heavenly things here that he's telling us. Right. So I'm, I'm fine to say I don't understand. I'm just going to be ready like the, the right. ten uh, virgins with the, right. the lampstands or all the, all the ones about ready to tie up the man, and the thief. Right. And my, any example he gave. I'm, I, I just want, we want to be ready. And that's why we teach. Right. That's why we teach. And, and, and please don't get suckered into those conversations. Why did I want to spend all this time in this kind of moving through this? Because people get suckered into believing that, oh, you know what? I don't know if this is it or I don't know if that's it. Yeah. And they especially get pulled now. by every direction. They yeah. get pulled by books that are out there. Mm -hmm. Everything else. Look, you will know. <laughs> that's the point of all this, I think. Jesus going, you're going to know. He's going to later on tell you that you're not going to know when. The time or day or I'll hour. know because yeah. Luann will be gone. I go, oh, the rapture, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be left behind. No, you Read won't. the Left Behind series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Read yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. yeah That'll yeah. maybe explain it better. That guy's good. Yeah. L left Behind. Don't be Left Behind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's pre millennial for sure. Yeah. Hal Lindsey. I mean, no, no, uh, no, no, I don't know his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know either. Dennis LaHaye or somebody. Or? Yeah, LaHaye. Yeah. A yeah. Anyway, he's yeah. he's talking about the rapture. Tim Lay. Tim Lay. Yeah. Yeah, not Dennis Lay. What? Yeah. But you, you study with Hal Lindsey. I, we got to go. It's fine after you. But you yeah. study with Hal. Lindsay. I, I just studied with him. I may have sat while he. But oh. he was t all he taught was the Book of John. I ne whenever I watch, interesting. I mean, he's like Paul. Right. Um, in person, actually, he's opposite Paul. In person, he's very powerful. He's he spoke. He get the whole Book of John. Amazing teaching. So I watched. I said, I'll watch this guy on his little TV show. Horrible. Oh, really? And that's the show that's about end times. End times that's what yeah. he's famous for. Right. Right. It was. I. Did, I thought. I'd never watch this guy, but when he taught the Bible, I liked. When he yeah. taught that stuff, the I didn't really like that. Isn't it interesting how end times is everybody wants to know about it, but then they're all bored with it when they go through it? it to me, it's... You no, know, but yeah, you're not yeah, the only one, yeah, right? Yeah. It's not... Because we want we want to hear something more than is there. And, and everybody says the same things or they put a spin on it. Yeah, and then yeah. what Rick is warning about and what I do on Sunday night, and then they don't just put a spin on it. They totally pervert it and yeah. scare you and tell you, come in, and they're trying to trap you. Or they really believe it themselves, and it does trap you. I mean, one yeah. or the other. But he says, don't chase those. Remember, don't go to the wilderness. Don't run after right. that mm -hmm. stuff. Just be ready, but but understand in your heart of hearts, you will know mm -hmm. when Jesus comes. You won't have any doubts. I promise you. Jesus is not. And if you want to know about these false teachers, read Second Peter, because yeah. he describes why they do what they do to widows, yeah. or, and, and, and they're after their own lust and their own money. Yeah. There's yeah. motives behind yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. We don't expect any of that from you. I don't. I, I'm just thankful you want to listen to us. I can't believe you do, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you. You're his favorite. We got to say that, right, Billy? Yes. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.